Listen, friends, it's no secret that I am a huge fan of AMD's APU lineup. And the most recent one that I got to review was this little chip right here, the Ryzen 3 5300G, of which I will continuously beg AMD, please sell these directly to the consumers. But when I checked this chip out, I didn't have access to my full arsenal because I just moved to Pennsylvania. So my Ryzen 5 2400G and 3400G were packed away in some cupboard somewhere, and I finally broken them out to do a comparison to see how far has AMD come with their APUs over the last three and a half years or so. The first launch of the 2400G happened back in February of 2018. We're sitting here in August of 2021. So it's been a good amount of time. And does the 5300G wipe the flow at the 2400G? Is it even worth considering the first gen APU that AMD came out with the Ryzen chip? Should you consider the 3400G? I didn't happen to get my hands on the 4300G for testing, but we can see first generation to latest generation quad core to quad core, what does it look like? And we're gonna get into all of this after I tell you about today's video sponsor. Today's UFT Tech video is sponsored by ASRock and their Z590 OC Formula motherboard. If you're looking for a high-end motherboard to push the limits of performance on your system, then look no further. Designed by an extreme overclocker, the Z590 OC Formula has features that help you get the highest frequencies. It's got 16 power phase design with 90A SPS or Smart Power Stage, which is a new power solution with fully optimized integrated MOSFETs with advanced driver IC, which provides current monitoring and more stable current for extreme overclocking. And then it also only has two DIMM slots for minimum routing to the CPU and SMD type DIMM instead of regular DIP style, which reduces signal loss, improves stability under high frequency, and maximizes overclocking potential. And then it also has 12 layer server grade low loss PCB, an OC button, as well as an OLED display that was added to give a cleaner and more informative way to express the status of the motherboard. It also has a PCB back drill, which removes the excess stub in multi-layered printed wiring boards. This benefits in extreme memory overclocking by allowing signal to flow from layer to another with less signal attenuation and improves impedance matching. And then you add on the normal features of a good motherboard, such as plenty of IO, Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.2, as well as two and a half gigabit per second LAN port and an extra gigabit LAN port. The Z590 OC formula is great for both work and play. Check it out at the link in the video description. Big thanks again to ASRock for sponsoring today's video. So let me give you a quick refresher on these APUs. The Ryzen 5 2400G, as I mentioned, launched in 2018. It's on the Zen 1 original architecture with four cores and eight threads. It has a base clock of 3.6 gigahertz with a boost clock of 3.9. For the GPU side of things, it has 11 Vega cores running at 1,250 megahertz. L1 cache is 384 kilobytes, L2 cache is two megabytes and L3 cache is four megabytes and it's running on PCI Express 3.0 up by eight lane. All pretty decent specs. The Ryzen 5 3400G is remarkably similar. Basically the difference is slight clock speed variation on both the CPU and the GPU and then obviously it's on the Zen Plus process as opposed to the original Zen. So the CPU on this is again four cores eight threads but running at 3.7 gigahertz base and 4.2 gigahertz boost so a little bit higher boost frequency and then those 11 GPU cores that are on this Vega 11 graphics are running at 1400 megahertz. So you have about 100 megahertz increase on the base clock of the CPU and then 150 megahertz increase on the clock of the GPU. And the Ryzen 5 3400G has been so popular that they're still selling it new right now on Amazon for like $270. My goodness, people, why are you still buying this chip? Is it because there's nothing else better on the market? Well, kind of, because AMD refuses to release their best stuff. The Ryzen 3 5300G is sitting right here. But before we get to that, let's talk about the 4300G, the missing generation that I don't have. Four cores, eight threads, 3.8 gigahertz base, four gigahertz boost, only six GPU cores this time at 1700 megahertz. And this is because AMD did some revision with the Vega architecture that's actually in the GPUs to make it more efficient so that even though it has fewer cores, almost half, it's actually more powerful. And once we get to the 5300G benchmarks, you'll see how much more powerful. And the 4300G was on the Zen 2 process. The big deal on the 5300G is that it's rocking the Zen 3 process. This is the first quad core Zen 3 chip that AMD has put out there to the public. I had to buy this bad boy off of eBay for 350 bucks. I'll do whatever it takes to run this YouTube channel, I promise. So the 5300G, four cores, eight threads, four gigahertz base, 4.2 gigahertz boost. It's the same six GPU cores as the 4300G and same 1700 megahertz. Again, though, 
AMD announcing that they've made some tweaks and adjustments to the Vega architecture so that it should be faster than the previous generation. One thing to note about the cache sizes on the 5300G is that they're slightly less on the L1 cache, 256 kilobytes versus the 384 kilobytes on the previous Ryzen 5 chips, but you have the same amount of L2 cache at two megabytes, but then double the amount of L3 cache or what AMD likes to call game cache at eight megabytes. Again, the Ryzen 3 5300G can't actually run anything more than PCI Express 3.0, but with a quad core chip, do you really need it? I'm actually gonna be testing that out in an upcoming video where I find out what's the best quad core CPU that you can buy here in 2021. So get subscribed to UFD Tech to stay up to date on all that. So that's a nice little spec rundown. I think it's intriguing to note that the Ryzen 5 class chips, which is supposed to be AMD's mid tier, right? Like this is where the Ryzen 3 was four cores and four threads when AMD first launched Ryzen and the Ryzen 7 was eight cores and 16 threads. Well, that's now been stepped down to the Ryzen 3 class. So what used to be mid tier is now entry level if AMD would ever sell it to us, which is a good advancement over the years. Hopefully if they ever do release something like this, like a Ryzen 3 5300, maybe not a G, then we could see something that's actually priced at 100 to $120 that gets you the exact same performance as something like a 2600 did back in the day, but better because of IPC improvements and all that. So what are the IPC improvements like? Well, let's start off comparing the 2400G to the 3400G, just so you have a baseline understanding of the changes from one generation to the next when it comes to AMD's APUs. So just know I tested these like I test all of my APUs, which is at 720p lowest possible graphic settings because I think that's really where these APUs tend to end up when it comes to optimal performance. This was all tested on my Aorus B450 Elite V2, one of the very few boards that can support all the way from the 2400G up to the 5300G. Big thanks to Zach's Tech Tier for actually sending me that board. You should go subscribe to him up there. I couldn't have done it without him. And we're running 32 gigabytes of DDR4 3200 megahertz CL16 RAM. So honestly, besides the CPU, I changed nothing else in this system. No motherboard swaps, no RAM swaps, no clock speed changes. Everything was run at stock on the APUs and everything in the motherboard stayed the exact same. So I'm not gonna read all of these benchmarks out to you. You can see them up on the screen right now, but suffice it to say that on average, AMD's Ryzen 5 3400G was roughly 4% faster than the 2400G. There are a few higher end exceptions that I do wanna note. Cyberpunk 2077 running remarkably better on the 30. 400G to the tune of over 10%. And then also Resident Evil 8, while it only ran 4.6% faster on the 3400G at like regular 720p low settings with FSR turned on, because this is one of the first AAA titles to support AMD's Fidelity FX super resolution, the 3400G was 14% faster than the original APU that AMD came out with. And when I say original APU, I'm just talking in the Ryzen lineup. Let's not talk about anything that came before that in the A10, A8 series, I'm not, not touching that. So it looks like AMD's FSR technology works a lot better on Zen Plus with that Vega graphics clock speed increase. So good stuff there. So now let's see how the 5300G stacks up against these two other APUs. And the results are actually kind of what you expect. Both in GPU performance, the 5300G slaps these things. And then also in games that were CPU bottleneck, it slaps it even harder because of that Zen 3 process. Sure, you have less L1 cache, but you're seeing a lot of advancements from the game cache that AMD's implemented, as well as the IPC improvements that are coming in here. It's not a massive gap considering there's a three and a half year difference between the newest chip and the earliest chip, considering that in other Ryzen implementations, we've seen between 10 to 15% gains year on year. What we're seeing here is roughly 17% difference between the 5300G and the 2400G over the last three and a half years. And then about a 13% difference between the 5300G and the 3400G. But I would like to call attention to a few benchmarks here that actually do show a tremendous uplift. The eSports titles actually showing a tremendous improvement probably because of the higher performance CPU that's in this 5300G. Fortnite showed a 30% gain over the 2400G, as well as Valorant, which showed a 32.5% increase over the 2400G, coming in at 174 FPS. And the other one that saw a major 30% upticks is GTA 5. Again, because it's running in that high clock speed territory, where we're finding more, more CPU bottleneck than GPU bottlenecks. So even though the 5300G has roughly half the GPU cores, only coming in with a Vega 6 as opposed to a Vega 11, it's showing that it can be in double digit percentage points versus a Vega 11 chip. That's actually pretty amazing that they downscaled the GPU cores 
increased the clock speed modestly, like 300 megahertz, and are still getting these types of performance gains, but then it's accelerated by that Zen 3 process, where when you're in the high frame rate territory, we're looking at more like 30% gains over these previous generations because Zen 3 is just so elevated over where AMD came in with the original Zen architecture. And again, FSR performance looking remarkably good on the 5300G. If we look at just the original benchmark, Resident Evil Village on the 5300G did 58.3 FPS average. Once you turn FSR on, you're at 88.2 FPS average, which is a huge uptick. And on the 5300G, it's a much larger uptick versus the previous generations, beating the 2400G by roughly 21.5%. So that's a lot of numbers, but I kind of want to break it down to you. Which, which chip's worth buying right now? What Should you even consider any of these? Well, I can say for a fact, you are not in your right mind if you consider for a second picking up the 3400G. Yes, it beats the 2400G handedly in a several different arenas. FSR was one of those major ones, but it comes in at over double the average selling price of the 2400G. I found the 2400G selling for an average price. This is sold listings on eBay and Macari, 125 bucks. That's not too bad for a chip that's three and a half years old. It's a little bit excessive in this current economy, but you know, we'll take what we can get. The 3400G is selling for $200 on eBay and $270 brand new. That's absurd, especially when you look at the 5300G, which you can pick up right now on eBay for $259. So this at APU is actually a much better value than the current other APU that AMD is offering direct to consumer. So this is yet again, my plea, AMD, sell your APUs to consumers. The 5300G should have gone on sale just like the 5600G and 5700G did. This is a great chip. Why can't we have it? It's very clear that a lot of people love the 24 and 3400G. The 5300G would probably sell like hotcakes. Is it because it would cut down on all the other CPU sales that you're trying to get? Is it because it would remove the ability for you to sell the 5600G or the 5600X because this would be too good of value? Is that one of the reasons why we don't have a Ryzen 3 lineup for Zen 3? Because you know people would buy it and it's not as high of margins? Or is there another explanation? Let me know why you think AMD is not selling these APUs direct to consumer. I wanna hear from you down below in the comments. Is it because they'll make more profit from just doing it straight through OEMs, even though they're not really selling them through OEMs either? But the conclusion is Ryzen 3 5300G, a lower tier chip outpacing what used to be a mid-tier chip from AMD by double digit percentage points, up to 30% in some instances. It's a good thing. I love APUs from AMD. They're slapping Intel, obviously. Intel hasn't been able to compete with AMD on APUs ever since the 2400G launched, and AMD just has continued to beat themselves over the years in a positive way. They've actually raised the bar to make it a much better ecosystem for everybody who doesn't need a GPU for their PC. Let me know what you think of the APUs over the years down below in the comments. And as I mentioned, get subscribed for our upcoming quad core battle that's gonna be happening sometime soon. And in case you're interested to see how a 2400G performs on Windows 11, you should check out the video we released yesterday where I did exactly that, an unsupported CPU on Windows 11. How's it perform? You'll find out. See you in the next UFT Tech video, my friends. Cheers.